I'm going to keep this very brief. Sagebrush is an amazing indie game about investigating the remains, if you will, of a cult. And I love this game so much. So let's get right into it. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Sagebrush. Black Sage Ranch, 250 miles northwest of Albuquerque. Site of the 1993 Perfect Haven mass suicide. Now that we have control of our character, we can see that we drove here, but I think we heard that. Beautiful, picturesque landscape, kind of isolated and buried in the mountains. First things first, Let's attempt the main gate. Thank you for the small tutorial. The gate won't budge and you didn't bring anything to bust it open. It can never be that easy. Maybe the car is pointing us in the right direction. Not gonna lie, you're surprised it actually made it all the way here. You brought some gear in the trunk. Let's go in the trunk. Wire cutters. One bit of gear. Well, I think I kind of get where we're supposed to use wire cutters. Maybe the hole in the fence? I borrowed them from the house. I hope I plan to return them. If I click the right button, the wire cutters clip through the small hole in the fence. Thank you. Okay, so there's a sprint function in this game. This is our first obvious door to go into. So let's do a little bit of exploration. It's too dark to make out too much detail. Telling me we need more light. Perfect Haven awaits those of faith. Got a guitar. Strings are rusted and the lacquer's faded. It's too dark to read anything. The glowing red light over here. Well, uh, I had just graduated from college. You know I was a communications major. That part was true. So I graduated and I couldn't find a job. I had no idea what I wanted to do and got pretty depressed. My boyfriend at the time said I was holding him back and took off. So that was that. I could have moved home, but I didn't. I stayed out in California, but it's not like I had any friends there. My parents would call and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted because I guess I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others. So the exposition for this game is delivered via these cassette tapes and interacting with pieces of paper and books and the environment around you. And in the kitchen, you open the door and immediately slam it shut after the overwhelming stench of rotting meat hits your nostrils. 
That was a mistake. Fiddle with the knobs, no hiss of gas, no clicking ignition. The range is long dead. I don't need to examine that. It's obviously gross. And that looks like... Yep, nope, not making that mistake twice. Let's go into the cupboard. Examine cereal. Tons of cereal boxes. None of the sugary stuff, though. Alright, I'm out. Not joining the cult. That kind of sealed the deal. Okay. You yeah, hammered it home enough. The light switches don't work. Maybe there's some sort of power nearby. So that wraps around back into the main hall. Got some other stuff on the wall over here. And a generator key. We've got a performance schedule. Josiah plays original hymns, gospel reading, Juliet violin recital, gospel reading, children reenactment, a book of Sariel. Note. The power's been pretty finicky lately. You might have to restart the generator to get the lights back on. The key's in the box, generator's around the side. Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. It can be a little confusing getting around our little home. Don't worry. Sister Anne has printed some maps to help you get acclimated. Open the map. So we are at the community hall. And you can see there's some trailers over here. There's a fire pit, a farm several buildings to investigate so let's crack on and finish scrubbing through a few rooms in here get some power on and do a secondary investigation of this building so we have a bathroom wait examine thank you it's appreciated drove all the way out here 250 miles north of Albuquerque for you to tell me I look tired when I look at a mirror. Good to know that mirror's the same. So we have two bathrooms. Obviously not a third one. Okay. So they enjoyed games. Got some books. A little dark to make out. Record player. It doesn't work because we need power makes sense too dark to make out much detail because we need power yeah you're really hammering that home okay let's go get power back outside we'll just kind of wrap around the building until we find what we're looking for fortunately there is a sprint mechanic and we're going to lean on it a little bit just to save ourselves some time. This is the quote unquote tutorial area. And a generator. Use the key. Generator hums to life. All right. And back inside. Ooh. I hear a lovely tune. Let's shed some light on the subject. A beautiful dining hall. Kitchen schedule. Monday, spinach casserole. Tuesday, barbecue. Wednesday, fasting. Thursday, pork chops. Friday, beef stew. Saturday, chicken. Sunday, fasting. Due to power outage, food stores have spoiled. We'll have to replace the planned meals with canned foodstuffs and produce until new supplies are acquired. Okay. And back in the hall of non-sugary cereals. And a note about Leonard. Leonard hasn't heeded warnings about taking more than his share of food. He keeps swiping snacks from the storage room. Until we can straighten him out, I've decided to move his favorite foods into the farm shed and hide the key on the side of the bookshelf next to the ping pong table. Hey. So I do like the way they deliver the story in this, that it's through your exploration, just kind of cycling. It'll let you know when you need to do like a specific task. You get that task done. You kind of get rewarded for doing it with more story. The painting shows an intensely focused middle-aged man. He holds a book in his left hand. The painting seems less than professional, but the man's determination shows through. An angel walks through an empty field, his hands pressed together in prayer. 
This painting depicts an angel tenderly cradling the corpse of Jesus Christ in his tomb. Clip through the door jam. Oh yeah, gotta turn on the light. Okay. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Okay. It's a convoluted way to say wash your hands. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. And everything she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean, and everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whosoever toucheth anything she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. Lavatitius. I will say it's a little harsh on the women, because in the men's bathroom it just said, wash your hands, don't be dirty. And with the women, they're like, if you're dirty, go away for a week. And if you touch her, you're gross too. A little fucking rude. Although I love the song, kind of want to kill it. Ah ha ha. Because we already looked at the other side, and there obviously wasn't anything there, so they hit it in the corner. I'm okay with that. Clip through the door jam. That comes in handy during speedruns, which we'll have to do later in this game. So we got a gate key. We have a gate. Two and two together makes three. The rusting lock fought back, but I won. So we have our first trophy pop up in that bottom right hand corner. You'll see several of those because this will be a 100% completion playthrough. So it's a let's play and a tutorial, if you will, if you've never played this game and care about things like that. With the map open, we see our community hall and then we heard that there was a farm shed that they were locking things up in and we have the farm shed key on the map that was basically directly behind us at this furthest south portion of the farm and the western portion of that little gray building you can kind of see it so let us begin the journey of walking there this is not a very large area that you have to explore you it was nice of them they kept it kind of small because we're going to mull over a few of the same points and places multiple times and it was nice of them to give us a large enough area but when you're talking a cult like this is a lot of land to own this is very expensive so it seems a little more logical and also save the devs on making this game because it didn't have to be massive and they tell a huge story in a very small place and a very simplistic way and it's very effective. So we're here. Let's go ahead and open up the door. Got a tape player again. Let's rifle through this jacket. And we got a key. So we'll look at that in a second. The first time I met Father James, I was immediately filled with a sense of peace hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. Oh, batteries. For a flashlight. It's another trophy. Can anyone truly know the joy of absolute truth? The freedom that comes with releasing all of one's doubt like so much ballast into the sea? I know that feeling now. For so long I searched. I searched among the Catholics, idol worshippers and perverts. I searched among the Baptists, hypocrites. 
I searched among the Pentecostals, infested by charlatans. I tried so many churches, and all of them, all of them to a one, were filled with fools and liars. Now I know why Father has helped me to see. Full of garden and farm implements, still caked in old gray dirt, and is that cereal? Mmm, so they were hiding his food out here. Just more general stuff lying around. Already searched the jacket. Nothing left but holes and dust. Same, buddy. Same. Okay, that sounds terrible. Never mind. Um, so, about the key. Got our Jenny key, but we have Andrew's trailer key. So let's head to the trailer park. What about that note? Obviously, you could see that he was very cynical. And there's Andrew's trailer, just to point out to you. Uh, but you could see that he was... It's very cynical and angry about other religions, that this is the one true religion that Father has presented to him. It was a very common mindset in a cult. So we're going to run over to Drew's trailer. We'll see what he's got to offer. There's the chapel up on the hill. Also got a large group of birds flying overhead. Very cinematic. Earlier I did praise how small this area was. And as you can see, it has not taken very long to sprint over to the trailers. Which, I like it. You can take your time and walk if you want. Or you can sprint. There's Brother Earl's trailer. Brother Aaron. The door's rusted shut. Looks like Andrew's trailer's right in the middle. In the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see the two trailers we just inspected. So let's there's the trailers. And there's where Drew should be, somewhere in this middle cluster. As we push through this storyline, it's going to get darker. So, there's Brother Andrew. Uh, so, it's really nice that they gave us a flashlight. Brian, I love you. You're my brother, but you do not know what you're talking about. This is my family now. They love me and I love them in a way that transcends even blood. Maybe that hurts you to hear. I'm sorry. But there's no hiding from the truth. I know you have your doubts about your church. You've told them to me. Let me tell you, I have no doubts here. None. Of course, if you stop denying what you know in your heart, we'd welcome you with open arms. You need to come to us. And uh, Viola's trailer key in Drew's trailer. So the movement in this is a little tricky. Andrew, I greatly enjoyed our talk earlier. I'd like to continue it. The children will be helping to sow the field tomorrow afternoon, so I'll be alone if you'd like to stop by. Viola. The plot thickens a little bit there, and Viola's inviting Andrew over. We men must all be fools to buy the malarkey spat at us by the mainstream churches. The Catholic Church says we're awaiting Christ's return when they full well know better, and the rest of Christendom believes them. The merry worshippers. Perhaps we'll never know why the Lord waited until Father James to correct the record. Perhaps our Father in Heaven waited for the earthly man he knew could bear this burden with grace. Blessed be our Lord who saw fit to include wretches like me in his plan. I await the third coming with open arms and a heart full of love. And on the tape... Life with the flock was good. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening, we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? 
I would have done anything for father. He saved me. So early on into our narrator's journey into being part of this group and assemblage of devout worshipers, things seem to be going good. She's found her place amongst her flock and feels like this is a place called home, a place of true belonging. Sister Hope, we're currently looking for Viola's trailer as we got her key from Andrew's trailer. Sister Viola, Juliet, and Lucas. So let's go ahead and open her door with the key we got from Andrew's trailer and see what story she has to tell other than the creepy bear. I had forgotten what love felt like. I thought that all the years suffering under Eric's thumb had ruined me. I thought there was no hope for happiness ever again, but I was so, so wrong. I feel so safe here. Father James has restored my faith in Christ, but also in men and in myself. A wonderful blessing. Yes, there's pain, but it's necessary, and I enter into it willingly and joyfully. I am so blessed to be a part of this flock and to help ensure that my dear children taste the fruit of eternal life. Lucas is taken to life here easily, but Juliet, well, we'll need to be patient with Juliet. She just needs time. She'll come around and see. Father James says that Eric will burn in hell for his sins against me. I know I shouldn't take joy in that, but the thought of it makes me smile. Father says that even Eric could join the flock if he wanted to badly enough, but I know my husband well enough to know that he would laugh in the face of the truth. He is rotten with sin, and he will get what he deserves. Oh, Lord, Jesus, please give me guidance. I was only doing what he asked of me, Lord. I was doing it for him and for you. But I'm two weeks late now and throwing up every morning, Lord. Oh, Lord, I don't know who the father is. It could be James or it could be... Do I tell him? Will he be happy with me or furious? Have I sinned? What cleansing will I need to endure to rid my soul of this black mark? Lillian, forgive me if I'm speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you and I worry that you are having doubts about the Father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me. But as someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Father James is a prophet of the Lord. He speaks the true word. If you need proof, just look at the prophecies that have come true. But more than that, if you pray and listen quietly, you will feel in your very soul the truth of his teachings. I'm here for you if you need to talk. Yours in Christ's love, Viola. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Do you know how good that feels? To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. Not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. So that would lead us to believe that maybe we're hearing from Viola? I'll see you tonight for alternative cleansing in the rectory. Come early, we have much to talk about. Know the day I receive my first vision and you'll know the code. Tuesday a.m., discussion of Matthew chapter 26. Tuesday p.m., discussion of the lies of the false churches. Wednesday a.m., discussion of Father James' visions and prophecies. Wednesday p.m., fieldwork. A reading from the book of Sariel, James 1, 1 through 3. This is the word of the angel Sariel, given unto the man James in the time before the days of taking. Sariel came unto James as he returned from unrighteous war. The angel appeared unto the man James under seven stars in the eastern sky. The angel spoke, Be not afraid, man, for you are chosen as a messenger. These words are the Lord's words. Become my words. Become your words. Okay, and we've already read this one. I'm going to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And that's what Viola's trailer has to offer. 
So we only have the key to the generator, and we were told to go to the rectory. Close the door, because polite. We're going to look around at some of these trailers and check names. Sister Mary and John. That door's rusted shut. Sister Janine. Rusted shut. That's a window. Sister Diane. Brother Henry. Brother Josiah. Brother Leonard. Aw, they're friends. Brother Christopher. And... Brother Peyton. Oh. Oh, he fucked up. That's not ideal. Why'd you chain someone in or someone out? Brother Andrew's trailer. Make sure we didn't miss anything. We read all that, got the key. I think we're good there. Sister Alana. Sister Julia and Ellie. Or L. There's Viola's trailer again. Make sure we didn't miss anything. bear window got it okay so we've kind of completed everything they've given to us basically we've just been told to go to the rectory sister Lillian don't have a key uh, showers and uh, Toilet. Neat. Okay, so this is the schoolhouse. Go ahead and head on in. And nothing happens. Maybe there's a power source outside. There is. I saw it. Let's turn that on. And the key works for everything. Gotta love it. Go back inside to that light switch. Close the door to be polite. There we go. Lucas, John, Juliet's jackets. Rustle through the pockets. Find nothing. Of course, the kids didn't have anything. And that tape deck. Uh, let's do some soft exploring before the tape deck. You can make out fate of writing from the last lesson. The first revelation. The day Father James received the truth. Okay. Flip through the calendar. April 7, celebration of crucifixion. June 3rd, feast of the first revelation. July 18, celebration of the birth of our prophet. Good to know. Illustrated books of Bible stories. Some pages are torn out. Terrible kids. A big role model for me is Father James. He's a prophet of Jesus and a great person. He's going to save all our souls and let us go to heaven. Father James is funny and smart too. He makes jokes during the talks that make everyone laugh. He shows that you can be a very good person even if you are a little bit weird looking. It's what's on the inside that matters. For teaching me that and for saving my soul, Father James is my role model. I love Father James and Jesus. Wonderful work, Lucas. Father will be proud. Juliet, honey, why are you so stubborn? Why do you reject the flock's love? You don't pay attention in class. You don't try hard on your assignments. You lie about your readings. I'm worried about you. 
I've asked Father James to take some time to speak with you one-on-one. -on -one. Please listen to him. He knows so much. He can help soothe your doubts. I promise. Just please give it a try. Love, Mom. Anna's my biggest role model. She's a perfect wife and mother of all of us. Just like Mary. She does everything she is told to help Father James. She thinks about everyone else before she thinks about herself. I hope to be just like her if I grow up before the days of reckoning. Great work, Elle. Anna would be so proud to hear this. You'll have many chances to be just like her in paradise, so don't worry. My role model is Jesus, because he is perfect and he loves everyone. I want to be more like Jesus. See me after class, Juliet. Leonard and Peyton are my role models. They know how to fight and how to protect the flock from Satan and secular bad guys. Good work, John. I hope it never comes to violence, though. But will it? I often helped Viola in the schoolhouse. I enjoyed working with the children. We taught them reading, writing, scripture. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. If Anne was like the mother of the flock, Viola was the older sister. I remember one lecture she gave the children on the nature of hell that was so vivid, so unflinching, it had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them, and she said, good, they should be scared. I do not appreciate the methodology of teaching with fear as a tool. Don't appreciate it. They're just kids, man. Don't scare them. The chalkboard tells us about the first revelation the day Father James received his truth, or the truth. And so, Viola, the letter he gave to her said that the date would be the day of his first revelation. And the only reference we got to that here is June 3rd, the feast of the first revelation, assuming they feasted on the day of the first revelation. But let's run over to the rectory real fast and let's see how the gate's locked. Obviously, it's going to be a numerical lock. Let's check to see how many digits it is. And then we can kind of press on from there. Okay, at the gate, padlock, four digit code. Simple enough. I, I didn't put in a combo. Leave me alone. We don't have a key. Our answer obviously lies in the schoolhouse that they're telling us exactly what the code is. I got a hunch to suspect that it is the date of the first revelation or whatever. The June 6th, I do believe it was. So we will come back to that. But there are... From going from the shed at the farm uh, over to the trailers and the schoolhouse now, we've kind of overlooked the fire pit a little bit. So I want to run over to it just to kind of look around, see if there's any extra clues, anything missing. Anything they've put down, we aren't picking up, if you catch my drift. So we got communal seating, centralized fireplace, something by the tree, a patch of dirt, a very obvious patch of dirt. A soft mound of dirt stands out. Yeah, I know it does. That's kind of why I pointed it out. No, the key's not going to work either. Obviously, you have to dig it. I don't know why I can't use my hands, but oh, we won't go there. I clawed it ravenously. So the other building I want to take a quick peek at is this guy over here on the left. It's a building on the farm. It's a cleansing chapel. Could be fun. Seems or sounds hygienic. What was that? that that's blood. Those are fl Those are flies. Seat from under the door, soaked into the dirt. 
flies swarm the area. I retract my statement of hygiene and cleanliness. Okay, while we're over here, we'll check this little building. Door rattles and creaks. So on the map, I believe this says it's like the mines or something. You're gross. Yeah, nope. Cleansing room and mines, yes. Okay, uh, we're going to come back to this. Obviously, the door, it's locked. Need keys for everything. Kind of smart, you know, safe. But gets in the way of us investigating what the hell happened here. So, we're going to get back to the school. Let's rigidly figure out what our code is and head towards the rectory where the game told us to go. I do like the minimalistic like sound design in this. Uh, reminds me a lot of the early PlayStation games, like survival horror games, where you're focused on like just the doors and the footsteps and just the general like atmosphere that you're in that surrounds you. So we've just got a strong just bugs chirping, which to me sounds a little bit like uh, cicadas or something. And it just it sounds nice. Honestly, I like just walking around in this game and just gently exploring the world that they've given to me because it just feels like it has so much to offer. But for the sake of, like, completion, we've sealed off Andrew's trailer, Viola's trailer. The doors that say the doors rusted shut we're never going to get a key for, so we can kind of ignore those, but I just want to make sure we've really gone through everything before I press on because we're really not going to be coming back to any of these areas so you know just do my last little double check turn the lights on I guess for fun and just make sure we really haven't missed anything because like I said this is a completionist playthrough I want you to be able to watch this and see everything there is to see in this game for the most part Yeah, still rusted shut. Thought it fixed itself by then. Mm, kind of peek in the window, but nothing important. Yeah. Okay, I kind of get the point. Doors are rusted shut. Yeah, still rusted shut. Figured we were in a time vacuum and things start reversing. You know, kind of get into these guys. Uh, clipping, okay. Nothing, nothing. Light switch. Like that the power still works for all these trailers and it's happened in 93. They don't, I don't think they really tell us when we're here, but been going for a while. Just let me read the damn letter. Okay, I already read the letter. Thank you. Yep, definitely read that one. Okay, nothing fresh, nothing new, nothing exciting. We didn't miss anything in there. I uh, feel like the only place left to check was the showers and the toilet. We didn't fully investigate them. Just kind of peeked in them. Uh, can't operate the handles. Feeling a little dirty walking around in the dirt. Yeah. Might need to use the restroom. Was, uh, uh, pregnant. Use pregnancy test. Lies tucked away near the toilet. It's positive. So that would be Viola. Uh, she talked about being positive. Or at least fairly certain she was pregnant. So she dumped it in the toilet there. So there's confirmation she was pregnant. And it was with the father. 
Hmm. But wasn't she in love with Andrew when that was going on? Okay. First revelation. Got the truth. June 3rd. Feast of the first revelation. It's got to be it. Don't feel like they're making this too hard on us. It's a very simple connect the dots game. January, February, March, April, May, June, June 0603 should be the code. We, however, are going to be doing that at the start of the very next episode. We are just getting started with how screwed up this story is. And I really hope to see you in the next episode so we can keep unfolding what the hell's going on at Black Sage Ranch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.